Hey guys, so today I'm really excited to refresh my everyday makeup drawer. We're going to shop my stash, which just means we're going to pick out some of my older products that I want to get some use out of during these next few weeks. As we're entering fall, I'm really excited to pull in some of my fall inspired products. So that's going to be our main focus today. I also did a look using most of the products that I picked out, which you'll see in the second half of this video. I kind of stop doing that in my shop my stash videos but I feel like it makes more sense to actually use the products that I just picked out in each shop my stash video rather than showing me using them in the next video which is what I used to do so let me know if you have any thoughts on this format but I'm thinking this is gonna, gonna be how I format them from now on just because I think it's helpful to see me use the products that I am picking out so <laughs> let me know what you think but before we get into it I do want to thank today's sponsor which is Skillshare I've worked with them several times on my channel in the past and I'm really excited to be continuing my partnership with them so if you haven't heard of Skillshare before it's an online learning community where you can take courses in any topic you could think of truly. And for me, I kind of had this realization recently. I've been out of school for a while and I just kind of miss learning and I don't want to stop learning just because I'm not in school anymore. The most recent Skillshare class I just finished up is about interior design because we did just recently move into a new apartment and I've been thinking a lot about how I want us to decorate our new space and just been kind of taking it slowly, but I definitely feel like I don't have a whole lot of confidence in interior design. Like I just don't know a whole lot about the theory of interior design. So this class was so helpful. It was taught by Clear Studios. The name of the class is Holistic Interior Design, Transform Your Personal Space for Well-Being. I really like how in this class they focus on how your space affects how you feel and all of your senses. They also talk about how to incorporate like nature into your space and things from your local community and ethical sourcing of your design pieces and decor. And it just made me really excited to start cultivating this this apartment into something that we really love. So highly recommend that course if you're interested in learning about interior design. But they've got so many great classes on there. They even have some foreign language classes that I'm looking into because I also want to brush up on some of my Spanish because I haven't used Spanish in a long time and I don't want to completely lose my knowledge of Spanish. So that's another thing I'm going to look into. But if you're interested in checking out Skillshare, the first 1,000 of you to use my link down below get a 30-day free trial of Skillshare. It's a great way to try it out, see if you like it, try out as many classes as you want in the those 30 days you could take you could take a class every day many of the classes are only like an hour or less so you can knock them out really quickly but they also have some longer ones that are like three four hours so it's really a little bit of everything any kind of subject that you're wanting to learn more about it's probably on there so I highly recommend checking out that free trial if you do want to try it out if you do use my link it also really helps me out and lets them know that I sent you there so be sure to use my link if you do and thank you so much for supporting me and watching my channel so that I can have opportunities like this. Let's go ahead and swap out my everyday makeup drawer. Alright, so let's start by taking a look at what was in my everyday makeup drawer for the last rotation. I think it's been about two and a half to three weeks since I did my last Shop My Stash video. So this is also the drawer that houses my project pan items and this other everyday use things like brow stuff. So those things are going to stay in here. But let me go ahead and take out my previous Shop My Stash items. I'll give you a little recap on each one, let you know my thoughts on them, and then we'll pick out a new set of goodies. So these are the shop my stash items that I had in my everyday makeup drawer for the past few weeks. It was actually a pretty small selection of things just because I was also kind of easing my way back into a new project pan. So I didn't want to overwhelm myself. I do think I'll pick out some more items than this for this rotation though. So first up we had two blushes in here. I, <laughs> I use these so much that I almost don't want to take them out, but I do think I need to give some of my other blushes some lovin'. So um, I will swap these back into my collection, pick some new things out. But this one you've heard me talk Talk about quite a bit. This is the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in Nude Kiss. Gorgeous, just pinkish rosy color. Um, really beautiful, fresh, youthful color. Great for like the, this kind of summer to fall transition time, which is kind of what the theme of this most recent Shop My Stash was. Um, then we had another one of my current favorite blushes in here. This is the Koki Soft Gradient Blush in Bellissima. You've seen this pop up in quite a few videos on my channel. Recently, I just love this color so much and this is the blush that got me on a red blush kick and now I am obsessed with red blush um, Nine times out of ten. I'm either wearing this the Milani cream blush or The Minori cream blush in scarlet, which is another great like 
coral red. Oh, and then also I've been wearing my Aether lip and cheek stains quite a bit on the cheeks as well. But yeah, this has been one of my favorite blushes this summer. By the way, over here in this drawer, this is like my new arrivals drawer. So we have Shop My Stash and Project Pan stuff, like older products in here. And then this is the drawer for giving some love to the newer items as well. I don't want to bring in new items and then just not use them. I want to give myself permission to have fun with those things too. So I really like having this drawer for new stuff, new things I'm testing out. And then this way, if I have like a speed reviews video I want to do coming up, going over just new products I've been trying, I kind of have them all rounded up in here already. So that way I can just keep them all in one place. I don't think it's time for me to take anything out of here. I mean, some of the stuff I have had for like over a month now, like these Aether lip oils, but I'm still just using them a ton. So I figure I'll go ahead and keep them in here. So anyway, that's what that drawer is, if you're wondering. Then I had my Nabla Skin Glazing Highlighter in the shade Privilege. This is one of my favorite, more subtle highlighters. I just, I love this for looks when I don't want to have like a super blinding highlight. It just, um, it's just a bit more subtle, not quite as metallic as some of my other highlighters. So it's great for those more subtle days. Definitely been into a more minimal makeup look recently, so this has been perfect, and I love that peachy champagne color. I just think it is so stunning. And I also felt like that went really well with both of those blushes. Then this was kind of the star of the whole show. I could not put this down. Uh, part of me doesn't want to take it out of my everyday makeup drawer now, but I'll probably put this back into my everyday makeup drawer at some point in during the fall season because it's just such a perfect fall quad. Um, I just, I love how warm these tones are. I did so many looks with this this month. Anytime I just didn't want to put too much thought into my eye makeup, which honestly was a lot of days this month, this is what I reach for. Sometimes I'll just pop the, the matte brown in the crease and then put that light shade all over the lid. I also did like a one shadow look with that more taupey color in there. And then quite a few times I also would just use all four of the shades as well. They're just, go they just go really well together. And this just gives me like summer and fall vibes. So really enjoyed that. Finally, I had two lipsticks, both from e.l.f. These are two of their Seriously Satin lipsticks in the shades Nectar and Persimmon. Nectar was the one that I wore more often. And I actually think I will go ahead and leave this in the drawer for this next rotation. Because now that it's September, I'm really just loving the fall colors and this is just one of my favorite nude lips for the fall. It's just a little bit deeper than the type of nude color I wear for most of the year. So I think I will keep this in for the next rotation as well. And then Persimmon is a true orange. I did wear this in my video responding to your hot takes. I think that was the only time I wore this this month, but I am glad that I got one more use out of this because to me this is definitely a summer shade. And I think that was the only time I wore this, this rotation. This is definitely the kind of color that I kind of have to plan my look around, you know, because it's just so bold. But I love the vibrant orange, so I think that's a great summer shade or even a great fall shade too. I mean, orange is totally a fall color. But this and these other items here I am going to go ahead and put back in my collection and swap out for something new. And the only thing that's going to stay behind is the e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick and Nectar, just because I feel like I, I just want to keep using that. By the way, in case you're wondering, these cream eyeshadows, these just kind of live in here. These are, well, my cream and liquid eyeshadows, just because these are the kind of things that I don't want to forget to use. And I find that if I have them in here, I am reminded to use them more often because I pretty much always just have this drawer open as I'm sitting here getting ready so it just reminds me to reach for those and not totally just neglect them for like two years straight. <laughs> That's all the stuff that is staying behind in there, mostly project pan stuff and then a few other things like this loose setting powder, those eyeshadows, and my Kosas concealer that are just things I kind of just permanently keep in here. So let's put these back and pick out some new fun stuff. Alrighty, so as I normally like to start, we're gonna go into my palette drawer first because then I can kind of decide what cheek products and lip products I want to use based on the palette color story. As you know, I'm definitely getting more into fall looks, but I'm not in like the full vampy fall mode yet. I'm kind of in that like early fall season. I'm kind of leaning toward maybe soft glam would be a good choice. This one, as you can see, does have a lot of great fall tones in it. And I think it would be fun to see what kind of pairings I can get with this and Norvina, which is my Pan That palette. So let's keep that in mind. But then I'm also going to see if there's anything else that strikes my fancy here. Also kind of eyeing this guy. Stoned Vibes from Urban Decay. This has been one of my favorites for quite some time. Ooh, you know what? I'm thinking I'm going to pick this one out because this has some good fall tones in it, but it also has some fun 
pops of color that I think make it good for this kind of like early fall season. So yeah, I think I'm gonna pull this one out. This one, I also just feel like I haven't been giving a ton of love. Also, my makeup storage, once again, still a work in progress. I am really enjoying this set of Alex drawers that I thrifted for $15, still can't believe that. But I do think this bottom drawer is probably not gonna be where I store my palettes forever. The main reason being, it is hard to open and close <laughs> with it being on the carpet. It kind of, you can see it sort of drags on the carpet, which isn't a huge deal. I'm guessing sometimes these drawers have wheels on them, perhaps, which makes it easier to open and close. But because it's so hard to open and close, I feel like that's just creating a barrier to me, <laughs> like, reaching into my palette collection. So um, I end up just, like, leaving palettes out on top of here or, like, on my desk, and then I don't put them away. And I also find the depth of this drawer a bit awkward. Just, like, there's so much vertical space here, and I feel like the space could be better used. So I'm thinking this is going to be for things like skincare and body care backups. Like if I get things in PR that I don't want to open right away, I can put them in here. So that's probably what this is going to be. And then I'm thinking I want to get like maybe a cute little shelf to keep my palettes on. That way I can see them all. So anyway, that's an update for anyone who's wondering. Let's pull in Stone Vibes. I think it was around this time two years ago that I first tried this out. So I feel like it's a good time of year to bring it back out. But Soft Glam, I definitely will pull into my everyday makeup drawer, possibly in the next rotation or definitely at some point in the fall. But I like to only have one palette in addition to my Pan That palette in my Shop My Stash so that I don't get too swamped with eyeshadows that I'm trying to use. So I'm thinking I also wanna bring in my BH Cosmetics Belgian Waffle palette. I This is another one of those things. I do keep it stored with my eyeshadow palettes, at least for now, but it is a face palette. It has bronzers and highlighters in it, and I love the formula in here. Both the bronzers and the highlighters I just find so buttery and creamy. So I think I'm gonna pull this one in as well. I think this has some good fall tones. Maybe I could experiment with using that maple shade, that bottom right shade that's a little too dark for me as a highlighter. Maybe I could try that out as an eyeshadow because I think that would make a really pretty kind of like bronzy eyeshadow for me. So yeah, let's try that. Let's let's bring that in as well. And that's going to be it for that drawer. So now we can go up to the top here. This is where I have my face products. So I do have a foundation already in my project pan. It's the Ilia Skin Tint, but I want to pull in my ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation as well. This is just one of my all-time favorite foundations. And this time of year is usually when I start getting a little bit into slightly higher coverage foundation. I don't really wear full coverage foundation often at all, and I actually none of my foundations I don't even think would be classified as full coverage, but this is a really good medium coverage. This is about as high coverage as I go typically. I love this foundation for just really any everyday look, but I also think this is my best foundation for those more glam looks that I'm kind of getting more into right now. So let's bring that in as well. We are all set for bronzer and highlighter, but I do want to pull in a blush, at least one blush, because I don't have any blushes in my project pan right now. So I'm trying to think what's going to go well with Stone Vibes. I think for a cream blush, I'm going to pull in my Tower 28 cream blush. This is in the shade Magic Hour. Just a great nude color. And I do think this color, this slightly more like toasty nude color is really pretty for the fall as we're kind of getting into the fall vibes. So I'm going to pull that in for my cream blush. And I think I will pull in a powder blush as well because I, I just love blush, as you know. Let's do, should I do my Essence blush? This is a little bit more of a, can you focus? This is a little bit more of a dusty rose. A chunk of it came out when I dropped it recently, but the rest of it seems to be holding together pretty well, so I'm impressed. But I think this is a great, slightly more neutral rose colored blush that also, I mean, this goes with everything. So yeah, let's pull that one in as well. One of my all time favorite drugstore blushes. And let's just do a quick scan here. I think that is everything that I need from this drawer right now. All right, so now for the lips. This is my lip drawer. I don't love the way it's organized, but let's see. So one of these, it's kind of calling my name right now. It's another kind of warm nude. I know I already have the e.l.f. lipstick in Nectar in my everyday makeup drawer, but this is the Urban Decay lipstick in the shade Liar. And this is another one of my favorite warm nudes. And this is the time of year when like warm nude lips are my favorite. 
And I've already used so much of this. I love this one. It's like a slightly lighter version of e.l.f. Nectar. So I could pair the two together. Let me go ahead and swatch these for you. Okay, so there's this two colors swatched. Yes, very similar. <laughs> the top one is Urban Decay Liar. The bottom one is e.l.f. Nectar. Actually, I guess Liar is a little bit deeper than Nectar. But Nectar is just a little bit more orange and Liar has a little bit more pink to it, but they're both kind of like warm, toasty nudes. And it just kind of makes me think of pumpkins, but like they're not too orange, you know? Most of the time, like warm, orangey nude lipsticks, I find a little bit like harsh looking on my lips, but these are two that I feel like work well on my fair skin, at least on my undertone. So yeah, I know it might seem kind of overkill to have two of like almost the same color in my shop, my stash, but yeah. Urban Decay Liar is also gonna join the party. All right, and then I think I'm gonna grab one more lipstick because I don't have any bullet lipsticks in my project pan. And this is the time of year where bullet lipsticks become my friend again. So <laughs> leaning towards something bold because the other two are obviously very nude, very neutral, but like not too vampy, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't want it to be like too, too much. Ooh. Ooh, should I do like a kind of wine purple one? This is the Estate Lip Thirst in the shade Pina. And it's this kind of, yeah, it's this like deep orchid color. Ooh, yes, I think this is gonna be it. I think that would be a fun pairing with Stone Vibes for sure. Like maybe with some of these purples down here or even just like that tiger's eye shade. Yeah, this one is definitely calling my name. So we're gonna add this one to the mix as well. All right, let's not forget my lip liner and eyeliner stash either. So let's see, these are my lip liners. I am going to grab, I mean, I wear a lot of these so often anyway, it's not even necessary for me to put like cokey nude and warm nude in my everyday makeup drawer because I'm always reaching for those. But I am going to grab this one from Koki. This is the shade Plum Purple. And as you can see, it's a very like vampy plum color, but I think that'll go great with that estate lipstick. And that's a color that I don't often wear, so now is the time to <laughs> give those some love. And as far as eyeliners, to go along with like the jewel tones with the Urban Decay palette, let me pull in my Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in Roxy. It's this kind of metallic royal blue. Always love that color. This would be fun to pop in the waterline or just to wear as like a winged liner. Yeah, I think those two together will make a really fun pairing. Okay, so let's actually put these products on my face now, shall we? Let's start with that ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation. I am so excited to be using this. It's just one of the best, seriously. My sunscreen of the day, by the way, is the Pipette Mineral Sunscreen. Love that stuff. And I'm actually blending this out with a brush today. This is the BK Beauty 101, or yeah, 101. I really, the only reason I'm using a brush is because I didn't feel like getting up and <laughs> wetting my sponge after I sat down. So yeah, but this is a good brush. It's actually clean right now also, which helps. I feel like foundation brushes work best when they're clean, obviously, but then after you've used them a few times, they just don't work as well because the bristles like stick together and I don't want to have to wash a brush in between every single use. So I feel like that's really the main reason that I use sponges more often because with sponges, I mean, yes, I do clean those in between probably every second or third use, but I don't have to wait for it to dry because I use sponges damp anyway, so that's the main difference. I feel like with brushes, I'm like, well, I need to clean this, but I also want to use it right now, so <laughs> so then I just end up not using it at all. But but this foundation, as you can see, gives really good coverage. It's definitely not the fullest coverage ever, but it's just about as much coverage as I could ever want. I do have quite a few breakouts right now that are kind of in their healing stage. I have narrowed it down to do things that might have broken me out. It's either the Essence Pretty Natural Foundation or the new Kapari Moisturizer that I've been testing. I didn't think it was breaking me out at first, but I stopped using both and the breakouts went away, so now I have to reintroduce each one and see what happens. It's a constant scientific experiment around here, but all of that to say, I do have quite a few breakouts right now, and this foundation pretty much covered them up, so I am very happy with that. For concealer, I am just going to use a combination of these two. My e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer, which is in my project pan. I'm getting pretty close to finishing that. 
and my Kosas Revealer Concealer. I'm just going to mix the two together. I've really been liking that combo recently. And I'm just going to do basically like one dot of each. The e.l.f. one I wear in the shade Light Ivory and the Kosas one I wear in the shade 1.5C. And the combo of those two concealers, I mean I like them both on their own, but together I feel like I just kind of get the best of both. Like I get a little bit more coverage than if I were just using the Kosas on its own, but I also get that really just natural skin-like effect that the Kosas one has. So my under eyes look great. I'm very happy with that. Should I do a combination of both blushes that I picked out today? I think I probably will. I'm going to go ahead and start out with the Tower 28 blush. This is in the shade Magic Hour. I'm just going to use my e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush to apply this. This is great for cream cheek products or foundations, but most often I use it for cheek products. Man, I love this color so much. It's the perfect cross between, or I guess it's the perfect peachy tan without pulling orange. So now that I have my cream blush on, I'm going to go ahead and set my face with powder. I'm going to use the e.l.f. Halo Glow Loose Setting Powder, which isn't in my project pan, but it's kind of just permanently in my shop, my stash, because I just like to use the loose powder on the under eyes most days. And then my project pan powder. Pan's looking real big. <laughs> I need to <laughs> repress that very soon. Quick tip. Before I set my under eye concealer with powder, I always just tap over, I look up and just tap over the fine lines that I have right under my eyes just to make sure that any concealer that's already settled there is blended out before I set it into place because I don't want to set those creases into place, you know? Then I just do a very small amount of powder evenly across. And when you set, you always want to either look up or just kind of go like this <laughs> to uh, flatten those creases out so that you can get the powder evenly in there. And that's a good way to help just minimize creasing of concealers under your eyes. And then going in with that e.l.f. Sheer Tint Powder in really just the T-zone. I like to go over the forehead, down the nose, but I'm, I'm not putting any on my cheeks. I don't really feel like my cheeks need setting powder and I don't want to cover up the cream blush, so I just kind of work around the cream blush. So then I am gonna use the BH Cosmetics Belgian Waffle Palette for my bronzer and highlighter. Let's do a mix of buttermilk and batter today. Those two, use my BH Cosmetics V2 brush. I'm just gonna tap and back and forth between the two. I always make sure to work it into the hairline so that there's no like harsh line there. For highlighter, I'm going to do a mix of powdered sugar and syrup, these two. So that is what those two mixed together looks like there. I love these so much. They're so smooth and just like glassy almost the way they go on. All right, so moving into the eyes now, I'm just going in with some of my CoverGirl Lid Lockup eyeshadow primer on my lids. And I'm going to fill in my brows with the Urban Decay Brow Blade. I'm thinking this is probably my last use out of this. Both the pencil and the marker are pretty much almost done. Like, it's nice that they kind of ran out at the same time. But that's how much I have left of that pencil. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I think this will be my last use. So, for my eye look, I think I am going to just use my Stoned Vibes palette. Because it's just been a while since I've used this. And I just... I'm excited to use it. So I'm going to start by taking the shade Good Karma here, that just matte cream color, and that I'm going to just apply to my brow bone and my crease, just to set those areas to make blending easier. Let me decide what lip I'm going to wear today, and then we can plan our eye look around that. So I did pick out those three. We have those two nudes that are both very similar, both kind of orangey nudes, and then the Estate Lip Thirst in... Pina. Kind of thinking, let's see, I actually kind of want to go with the purple. This is just, for some reason, this shade is really exciting me today. So let's kind of base our look around that color. I think I'm going to stick to this quad of shimmers here, Tiger's Eye Vibes, Raw Energy, and Meditate. Um, but I am going to go ahead and start out my crease with the shade Antidote, this peach color. So then I'm thinking the shade Third Eye, which is this nice deep eggplant purple color, is going to make a great outer corner shade. 
and I think that'll tie in with the purple lip really nicely. So I'm going to pick some of that up on this Real Techniques shading brush and just kind of pack that into my outer corner. Taking my fluffy brush and just blending out those edges. Alright, so as far as shimmers go, I'm not sure if I'm going to use all four of these, but those are the four that I think are going to go best. Let's take, let's take some of Meditate, this shade right here. This is a nice kind of like brownish mauve. I'm going to tap that in the center of my lid and let that overlap a little bit with third eye as well. So then I'm going to take Vibes, which is that sort of light purple shade, and that is going to go kind of in the inner third of my lid. I love that shade. That is Vibes and Tiger's Eye. Those two are my favorite shades in this palette, but man, Vibes just has that incredible texture that I just love so much. And these, these shades are glittery without really like enhancing texture on your eyelids. Like if you have crepey eyelids or you know, dry skin on your eyelids, it's not going to emphasize that. Man, I wish they had kept this palette permanent and not made it limited edition. <laughs> so good. Did you guys see the new Urban Decay Naked palette that's launching though? The Naked palette that's like super colorful? It's in collaboration with an illustrator and I actually really like this color story. I'm thinking about picking it up. If I, if I don't get it in PR, I'm thinking about purchasing it because it's really pretty. One of the prettiest palettes Urban Decay has done since Stone Vibes. I'm going to just take a little bit more Vibes on my pinky and tap that into my inner corner. So I'm not going to use the blue eyeliner today. I just don't think it's going to go with this look, but I do want to use one of my current favorite eyeliners. I talked about this in my top two in every category. This is one of my top eyeliners at the moment. I really like smudging this along my lower lash line. Not in the waterline per se. Sometimes I just don't really like putting things in my waterline, but just right along the lash line kind of brightens the area, but it does give it like the softest little bit of definition too. I'm going to use my flower, my other favorite eyeliner right now, my flower uh, for everywhere winged liner in dark and stormy, just a dark brown liner. I just went for a little wing there. The tip of this makes it so easy to just kind of stamp on a wing. For mascara, I'm going to use my Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity. All right, now it's time for our vampy lip. Very excited about these. So first, I'm going to line my lips with the Koki Lip Liner in Plum Purple. And with a bold lip liner like this, I truly just outline my lips typically. If it's a nude, I'll kind of fill them in and almost contour them with the lip liner, but for this color, I'm just outlining my lips and then filling in my lips with the lipstick. Mmm, okay, love that color. I've got to wear that more often this fall because that is so fun. Alright, so there is the final look using most of these new Shop My Stash items. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out Skillshare if you want to take advantage of that free trial offer. And if you do end up trying it out, let me know what your favorite classes are because I'm always looking for more recommendations. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you liked it so that it pushes it out to more people. So it really does help me out when you do that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd love to see you again soon. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.